Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on SoCan v. Bell. What y'all think y'all doing bringing us the quote for this guy and saying we steal and beat? Y'all can't copyright no beats, man. Your judges ain't... When buying music online, we usually have an opportunity to preview a song before we buy it. The song is protected by copyright, and a 45-second preview of a 3-minute song is a substantial amount. Should the rights holders in that song be compensated for the playing of that online excerpt? Or should those previews be covered under fair dealing? SOCAN is a copyright collective representing the rights of songwriters, and SOCAN held the view that rights holders should be compensated when their songs are previewed online. So, in 1995, SOCAN asked the Copyright Board to provide a tariff or royalty rate for reproducing music over the internet, covering not only the downloading of songs, but also the streaming of previews. The Copyright Board determined royalty rates for the downloads, but decided that previews were covered by fair dealing since their purpose was for research, and, as such, no royalties should have to be paid. SOCAN then took the case to the Federal Court of Appeal as a lawsuit against a group of 14 companies and agencies. The Federal Court of Appeal agreed with the Copyright Board that royalties did not need to be paid for previews. SOCAN again appealed the decision, this time to the Supreme Court of Canada, naming Bell and seven other companies and associations as respondents. The SOCAN v. Bell case centered on three issues. The first issue concerns whether fair dealing can apply to the playing of the previews. The second issue centers around the appropriate viewpoint for purposes under fair dealing. And the third issue is, if listening to the previews is considered research for the purposes of fair dealing, whether playing the previews passes the CCH six-factor test. For fair dealing to apply, the playing of the previews would have to serve one of the specific purposes under fair dealing. In this case, the issue is whether the streaming of previews constitutes research. If it does, this would be said to pass the first step of the two-step fair dealing assessment. While SOCAN argued that research should be defined as the systematic investigation into and study of material in order to establish facts and new conclusions, the Supreme Court took a much broader view. The Supreme Court held that research can be piecemeal, informal, exploratory, or confirmatory. It can in fact be undertaken for no purpose except personal interest. The court suggested that research should be broadly defined in the first step. The analytical heavy hitting is done in determining whether the dealing was fair which takes place in the second step of the process. Therefore, in line with the two earlier decisions of the Copyright Board and the Federal Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court held that the previews did constitute research. Having decided that the previews constitute research, the court turned to the second major issue, whose perspective to use for considering the purpose of the use of a work. Whose purpose should be considered? The party responsible for playing the music is the Internet Service Provider, or ISP, such as Bell, Rogers, or Telus. The party listening to the music is the customer. If research is to be the purpose of streaming the previews under fair dealing, then who must be doing the research? The ISP, who is initiating the stream, or the customer, who is receiving the stream? While SOCAN argued that the ISP's perspective should be used as the viewpoint from which to consider whether the dealing was fair, the Supreme Court again decided that the Copyright Board and the Federal Court of Appeal had been correct in focusing on the end user's purpose, not the service providers. The Supreme Court clearly stated that the predominant perspective in this case is that of the ultimate users of the previews, and their purpose in using previews was to help them research and identify musical works for online purchase. The third issue was, if listening to the previews is considered as research for the purposes of fair dealing, then does playing the previews pass the CCH six-factor test? This issue relates to the second step of the fair dealing assessment. The court applied, and thus reaffirmed, both the procedure and the six factors used in CCH. It was determined that the user was listening to previews for consumer or other research purposes. The court felt that the presence of safeguards helped ensure that use was limited to this purpose. Safeguards were also noted when the court considered the character of the dealing. These included the inability to download the previews, the short length and relatively low quality of the files, and the fact that they were deleted after playing. In assessing the amount of the dealing, SOCAN had argued that the aggregate number of previews should be considered. This diverged from the Copyright Board's decision to assess the amount of the dealing as the proportion of the work copied, not the aggregate number of copies made. 
the Supreme Court again sided with the original arguments of the Copyright Board and stated, the amount of the dealing factor should therefore be assessed by looking at how each dealing occurs on an individual level, not on the aggregate use. Furthermore, the court clarified that the aggregate copying was considered in the character of the dealing factor, and not the amount of the dealing factor. Sokan claimed that users could rely on a wide number of alternatives to preview when choosing what music to buy. Album artwork, textual descriptions, and user-generated album reviews were offered as alternatives. However, the Supreme Court noted that these options were not true alternatives to previewing the music, as only previews can demonstrate to a consumer what the music actually sounds like. The fifth factor examines whether the work is one which should be widely disseminated. So Ken agreed that the work should be widely disseminated, but argued that since the works are already easily purchased and disseminated without previews, previews provide no additional benefit to dissemination. The court disagreed, pointing out that unless a potential consumer can locate and identify a work he or she wants to buy, the work will not be disseminated. Finally, the Supreme Court considered the effect of the dealing on the work. The court found that since the purpose of the previews was to increase the sale of the originals, the previews could not be said to have a negative impact on the original, nor were they in competition with the original works. Based on the Supreme Court's six-factor fair dealing analysis, the dealing was found to be fair. To summarize, in So Can V Bell, the Supreme Court found that the previews of songs streamed on the internet were for a research purpose, that the research was conducted by the customer, and that this use satisfied the six-factor test and thus counted as fair dealing. Therefore, So Can's appeal was dismissed. The court provided its decision in July of 2012, along with the four other copyright cases, which are collectively referred to as the copyright pentalogy. This case, along with the closely aligned decision in Alberta Education v. Access Copyright, another of the pentalogy, is an important piece of Supreme Court jurisprudence as it reaffirms and further clarifies the application of the CCH six-factor test. You should now be able to recount the circumstances and outcome of the Socan v. Bell case, describe the role of fair dealing in the Socan v. Bell case, and explain the use and interpretation of the CCH six-factor test in the So Can V Bell case. This has been the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on So Can V Bell. Thank you for your attention.